Happy to be here this morning to commission the renovated and modernized Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. A year after this, the sword for the commencement of work on the project was cut. It is gratifying to note that the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park has not only been renovated, but it has also been completely modernized to befit the status of the final resting place of the man who led us to independence in 1957. The park now has facilities including a presidential library, receptive facility, with the tombstone upgraded and the museum expanded with an audio visual tunnel. As the outstanding Pan-Africanist of his generation, the burial site of Dr. Nkrumah must be appropriate to his status and exceptional contribution to the liberation of Africa from colonialism and imperialism. Together, we can create a legacy that future generations will celebrate. Mine, ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor and pleasure to declare the renovated and modernized Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park duly open. That's for creating this commercially, like paying to visit the place. So, I don't know how many people have visited it before before it was shut. <laughs> but if you have, you can still see some changes, new structures on the park. Yes. 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 So just right behind me is a fine building. It happens to be more of an audiovisual gallery. So such that when you enter, you only hear the voices of other and yeah, some, some of his videos that you could watch of him actually talking and also on the walls of the gallery you will find some pictures of him with some international personalities and most importantly quotes he had made some of his quotes all over the wall that's from here and ends on the other side that's the main museum space down there not much has happened there except for the rearrangement a new concept being brought in now when you enter we have four different sections of it structured properly now where you the first section talks about his early life education and childhood the second section talks about his political activities the people he met and struggled towards independence you see pictures of that and some items related to that the third section talks about his achievements, which is a very something totally new, where we've listed things he did as present. So from education, health, infrastructure, transportation, they are all listed for you to see. And the last part of the gallery talks about his overthrow and his demise. So when he was overthrown, he went to live in Guinea and the pictures, and some of his things that Related to that, like his coffin, he was laid when he died from Guinea to Inkrofo, you would also find. So we have a new arrangement now in the museum. So and we now have, what I would say, a working desk. So the desk 
he used as president is properly arranged with his pen, his reading glasses, and his stamp and his telephone on it for you to actually see how it looks like. And we're also able to get a picture of him behind a desk as he was working. So you also see that in there. But as I said to your leaders earlier, that's a, the, the Muslim way is laid to rest. Not much has happened. There was as much as possible. We didn't want to touch the old man's grave, sacred, so it's still there. Fatih's tomb has been redone a bit to look a bit nicer now. And also, the park after this renovation will stay open a bit deep into the night. So we have a new lightning system to make it that possible for people to visit the place. We have a new fountain system, it's a musical fountain system, such that when they slot in the music, the rhythm of the song determines the flow of the, the water. So you you like that more in the evening. That's why the park will stay open till like around 10 p.m. Oh, nice. Ready to fill the place at night. What you do it is more nightlife activity for the space too. So that's it. So we also have a new snack area, a picnic area for those who brought food and want to sit after a tour. Is there? There's a snack back area also over there. There's also a mini amphitheater. Everyone could write out to have some programs on the other side of the park. And the new, there's a new facility which is a, which we have the whole block built for us for a receptive facility. So which contains um, a ticketing area. In fact, our ticketing system has now changed. It's more digital for those who come here. So one of my colleagues will take you through the tour. And any questions you have, you can push it to us. So my pleasure meeting you. Then, prostate cancer. Dr. Nkoma was the only child to the mother, Madame Elizabeth Nyaniba. And after his education in Ghana as a teacher, he continued to Lincoln University in the state and later to London School of Economics. He later came back to Ghana on an invitation to help fight for our independence. He joined a group of five men with him making sex and referred to them as the Pixies. So in honor of them, we have them on our currency. But later on, he separated from them, formed his own party, Convention People's Party. This was because he was of the view that independence should be now, and they said later. So in 1950, Dr. Nkrumah declared a positive action against our colonial masters. And positive action means self-government. To free us from colonial rule, he was arrested and imprisoned. Whilst in prison, there was a general election. He contested and he won. He spent one year, two months in prison. And when he came out, they made him leader of government business. 6th of March, 1957, he stood on those grounds to declare independence. And then the British flag was down, the Ghana flag was hoisted. Even though he declared independence, he was not made president because the British were still around. So 1st July, 1960, he was sworn in as president of the Republic. And as such, every 1st July in Ghana became a Republic Day until some years back, so we no longer celebrate it. In 1966, Dr. Nkoma was in Vietnam on a peace mission. He made a transit in China, and there he heard there was a coup in his absence. He never came back to Ghana, but diverted to Guinea Conakry, where he was made a co-president. He ruled in Guinea also for six years. In 1971, he took ill. He was taken to Bucharest for treatment and he passed. The body was embalmed, laid in state in Guinea, in a casket we'll be seeing in the museum. Then three months later, the family requested that it should be brought. It was sent to his birthplace in Crawford, also laid in state for 20 years. Those days you could see the body, but now it's decomposed. 
So after 20 years, the then president Jerry Rollins thought it wise that he needs a befitting barrier. And since this was where he declared, the remains were brought but transferred from the original metal casket into a wooden one and buried in the mausoleum. And his family life with their wife and children. He married an Egyptian woman, Madame Fatia. They had three. Uh, Dr. Nkuma had a son with a Ghanaian woman called Madame Henrietta Miller from Elmina. So in all, Dr. Nkuma had four children. The first son, Professor Francis, is a medical doctor, retired pediatrician, of course. He's now old, very old. Then Gamel, a journalist in Egypt. The only daughter, Samia, was also a journalist by profession, formerly of Italy, now in Ghana. Then the last one, Seku Nkrumah, currently in the US. When Dr. Nkrumah passed, the mother was then alive, but she was visually impaired due to old age. A few years later, she also passed. We have the park divided into, now I'll say, four sections. We have the museum, the mausoleum, and the fountain, now the tunnel. Then it talks about the uh, dark days in Ghana. That's the when the coup started, so it's dark in there. As we move along, it's independence, then the light you see, so we can just go through. So the statue was then in front of the old parliament house. And the woman said she picked it for the love she had for him. She hid it for 43 years. She brought it some years ago, so the state decided to separate the head from the body. That's why you see it. It looks like a truncated tree, a big tree cut short, no leaves, no branches. It signifies the uncompleted work of Dr. Nkrumah. It also looks like the handle of a sword. When you turn the sword upside down, you have the handle and it's for peace. There's a black star there and it's for the hope of Africa. We also have the final burial of Dr. Nkrumah there with the wife, Madame Fatia Nkrumah. During the coup, they separated for security reasons. They never met. So on her sick bed, she made a will to be buried by the husband. She died 2007. She was also brought and buried by him. Then we have the fountain. The fountain, we have seven home blowers on each side. And the figure seven stands for perfection. The home blowers are blowing to announce the death of Dr. Nkoma. We know what are to be alive. So we say, even though he's dead, he's still alive. And down there also we have a drummer and a guitarist. They are all playing, welcoming you to the park. Where the statue is was where he stood to declare independence. And that statue is made of bronze. His finger pointing forward says, forward ever, backwards never, which became the slogan for his party, CPP. So this is the entry point when going. See, like she just exhibited. But for now, let's watch here. <laughs> Shelly! <laughs> Welcome! Come.
because I was born in Africa. But because Africa was born in me. You got it? Mm. So this is the new restaurant. I'm going to